Alright, welcome everybody to the Haunting Lodge. This is the last pre-release stream that we're gonna do before the release of The Hunter Called Wilds. So today I have two special guests with me. Would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm Andreas Wangler, um, level designer, narrative designer on Call of the Wild. Yeah. Hey, I'm Greg Stankevich. I'm the dialogue and localization coordinator on Call of the Wild. Yeah. And as usual, we have Stefan with us in the headphones. Yeah, hello. I'm just uh, I'm just in the background. I'm not beautiful enough to be allowed on oh. camera. I'm locked into a black room uh, at the moment, and they threw away the key. That's where we like to keep you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So today, I hope that you guys are super excited. We only have two days until the game is released. Almost there. It's crazy. And we're going to focus on missions today. Yeah. And see how that And some works. exploration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't so, we dive into it? Sure. So I'll start with showing you um, a little bit here. I <clears throat> We are now a, 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 uh, quite far into the game. Um, so I've been... Uh, I have already visited two lookout points uh, that you can see here and here on the map. And when you visit those, you unlock the well the parts of the maps, as you can see. So these circular areas here have been unlocked. And when you do that, you also uh, get icons added to the map, uh, places to visit, basically. So um, in this case, we have on, uh, an outpost added to the map here, and also here. And we are at this outpost at the moment. Um, so what we're gonna do today is um, well, we're gonna we have ha uh, gotten a mission from one of the characters in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, she's called Emily Connors, and uh, she wants us to um, take pictures for her uh, because she's heard that we are also good at pho photography. Yeah. We are. We're um, like the best. Yep. Yep. Right. With so, our smartphones and our hunter mates. So today, yeah, we we want to show off the the camera in the game, which we have also besides the guns. Um, and uh, so she wants us to take a picture of uh, f uh, famous rock formations in High Lake, which we have over here. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna head towards there and uh, see what happens on the way, basically. That sounds great. Uh, get a little guided tour from Andreas today. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's not every day you get that. So I I will probably run uh, a bit uh, today, um, even though we might scare off the animals. It seems to be a pretty common thing about amongst <laughs> developers in general, actually. <laughs> Doc wouldn't be happy. No, he'd tell you to slow down, probably. He's kind of party pooper like that. <laughs> <laughs> Both the wardens would, would give you one of those um, introductory tutorial messages that say, oh, Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. You read my mind. You, you do your it. feet moving. <laughs> He's saying it in a, a more of like, um, I'm not sure how to put this. He's angry, but he doesn't want to show it. <laughs> it's like passive aggressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a really passive aggressive way. So, <laughs> so while, we, while we're getting there, why don't you guys tell us what you do on the game? Like, what's your job? Greg. Oh, I, you're, you're busy running, so I'll talk a little <laughs> bit about it. Um, so I, I did basically working uh, on the dialogue and the localization for the game, which means that I manage the voiceover recording process. Um, as far as the dialogue is concerned, and localization of the game into seven languages. Um, so we have um, a lot of great languages that now. are going to be featured Find in the, the game, and players are going to be able to switch no through all of these languages. No, I'm cut off, Doc. <laughs> uh, we had a fun time casting Doc, actually, speaking of the dialogue. Um, you know, we worked with a recording studio and an agency. Uh, which handled the casting as well, and they auditioned and sent us different options for the doc, and 
Um, I believe we were, you know, the age range we were looking for was like uh, late 40s or 50s, um, rugged, um, you know, outdoors type of guy. Um, and we got a lot of cool options. That uh, sounds really cool. Yeah. It really does. Did you get any voice that you were like, this could be Doc, but this could also be? Was it hard to decide? What do you think? Uh, no, I think we we may we Sounds found like a Richard's really a good hand. voice mm. with Doc. I think it's um, perfect. We have stumbled upon a drinking zone here. Oh. And also, you might have missed that, but Doc, um, as we, we as we are coming closer here out. to our um, objective, he um, he mentioned that, scene. so I can fill you in on the he gives later. us some information from time to time throughout the missions. So to let us know that we're on the on the right way. That's always reassuring. Yeah. I would say actually bringing it back to the casting of Doc, um, there was this one voice that actually I was kind of pushing the team to reconsider. Mm -hmm. uh, there was definitely um, uh, the current Doc you hear now as a standout, and I'd agree. Um, but uh, I was pushing for someone who was a little bit older. Um, oh. He was kind of maybe in his fifties and maybe even leaning on the 60s um, and I thought he brought uh, a sort of uh, level of experience and years that would be appropriate for Doc um, but uh, this individual who we ended up casting was just a standout in terms of all of the situations Doc will put you through and mm. all the interactions that the player will have with him and showed a great range in uh, their acting ability. I think it's very immersive if anything. It just, yeah, you get a feeling of who Doc is, I think, just from what he is. Yeah. So, um, we've arrived to a place that I just wanted to... Uh, we're, we're close to a lake here, South Lake. Um, and uh, we happen to have a collectible here, which is, uh, in this case, a shed. So, amongst the activities you can um, do besides hunting are is collecting sheds. Uh, and other collectibles actually um, and it happens to be over here so let's go and just collect it look at that you found a shed I've already got a big enough collection back home so I've started selling any new ones I find people often buy them for handicrafts you know knife handles and such I once sold a really nice moose antler for 500 bucks <laughs> 500 bucks. That's a big one right there. That's uh Yeah, and these are all uh, sure. all around the world. You can find them. Um, and it gives you a bit of an experience uh, point boost. That's very cool. Yeah. If you want to stay busy on the road, <clears throat> I keep a lookout for sheds. You know, antlers that are shed by the reserve animals. They're rare to find and very popular to collect. So the, the great thing about a lot of the dialogue we've tried to set up is it's all contextually based. Um, so the reason Doc is saying something is because you just picked up a shed. Um, so he's clearly going to give you information on what you just did. Um, so it's very reactive to what the player is doing at that moment in time. Yeah, That's super useful. Because I know sometimes in games you would find, I don't know, like a collectible for example, and it's not always clear what you're supposed to do with it, like is it a crafting thing or... Yeah. I think that's great. And the same for the missions, so when you fulfill certain parts of objectives and other stuff, uh, Doc will, will mention that. Uh, we've arrived to another uh, thing in the world you can stumble upon, and this is a, a point of interest, we call them. Uh, it's a cairn, um, and when you interact with them, you get a, a, an entry added to the codex that you can visit. Um, so in this case, we go over here, and uh, in this case, we got a little information about, general information about the white tail. Um, and, but the info you can get at these points can be very different. It can be about animals, about the characters in the world. Um, so, yeah. And that one was great because that one actually talked a little bit about the organs of the white tail. Exactly. So you know what kind of vital areas you can aim at um, yes. to make sure that you're you know, doing an ethical uh, process of hunting there. So you can basically sneak out some extra information that will help you when you're hunting. Yeah, exactly. That's great. That's a, like, it's like 
little sneaky put in there. Yeah. Yeah, and if the player didn't find that point of interest, you know, that sort of, that information uh, wouldn't be available to them. So we were rewarding uh, the kind of players who, you know, have those urges to seek out everything mm -hmm. they see and explore every nook and cranny, um, which is always a fun aspect of open world games, I think. That's super cool. Oh, we got a call there as well. Yeah, we've got a call. black tail over there. Was that a rabbit or did it? Not? I think I, think I saw something? it. Yeah, I think I saw it sprinting um, off. But, oh, there. I know. Maybe not. You can obviously hear us, it seems, as it's a warning call. Yeah. And here's another example of a contextual tutorial message that pops up um, with information that is relevant to what you're doing right now. So you just scared an animal. So now the tutorial text is talking about, you know, why did you? Why is that animal fleeing? Mm. What did you do? It's good feedback because sometimes it's hard to know like was it was I seen was I heard right did I run and there it is it says an animal has picked up your scent so oh, okay. in this point if we look at what's going on we're traveling in, we are with the wind direction yes so our scent is being carried down the wind uh, stream and the animal is picking it up and detecting us so this will probably not work out for me <laughs> if I don't go. <laughs> Uh, do a bit of a. Oh, that yeah. is still around. Now I don't. I'm not as uh, right. much in the wind direction, I guess, so it could work out. It's always something. Yeah. I thought I saw something wrong, but it might have been another little bunny. Uh. Oh, there it is, the little bunny. There it is. Oh, so cute. Little critter. <laughs> so there you saw that we also got a confirmation that we now, uh, now, now we are close to the high, high lake rock formations, um, which is uh, over here. So we are gonna close in on on those and uh, take our picture, uh, and let's see if we can maybe stumble upon an animal on our way. So Emily Connors, um, which is our mission giver in this case, she is um, she's a writer, and she she uses she stays in the um, watchtowers uh, spread out in the world, and she does her writing there, uh, while also then uh, helping out with keeping uh, control of uh, uh, do uh, she's doing fire watching basically mm, yeah. uh, at the same time. Um, and she happens to have an interest uh, in the Roosevelt elk, so she will. Uh, her missions will be connected to the Roosevelt elk. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit how it works with the characters you you get to know. They are somewhat connected to uh, a main a main animal. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. So it would be like she's the Roosevelt elk lady, and then we have. The other characters, so yeah, yeah, a black-tailed deer Ooh. person and a white-tailed deer. Uh, we, you know, we've always said that, uh, as with many open-world games, but particularly in the Hunter, we're not trying to push the mission system on any players. It's completely optional. But what it does is it encourages players to experience everything the game has to offer mm. um, in sort of a little bit more of a, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, ordered way. Yeah. Showcasing everything that they may not see, you know, if they stayed in one area, maybe they wouldn't encounter the black bear. Um, maybe it would just be the black-tailed deer that mm. they see. Yeah, that's kind of what I feel as I'm maybe a, a new hunter and I go into the Hunter Call of the Wild and I'm not sure where to start or what to do first. I think missions would be like a really good, at least like an opener to the yeah. game to like start to experience like what's my favorite species to hunt. And right. Absolutely, um, I totally agree. Uh, I think we've we've uh, you know tried to base these mission systems around the animal and also have an interesting character that has a meaningf meaningful connection to that animal, mm. um, and the mission system will showcase that. And as you commit more time into it, uh, we hope that uh, the players uh, get more narrative out of it as well. All right. Wow.
Look so here we have them. Oh, look at that. High Lake Rock Formations. And um, I'll bring up my camera. Um, How do you bring that out? I'm pressing uh, P. Nice. P for photo. 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 Yes. <laughs> and I'll just take the picture. Perfect. Like that. Masterpiece right there. <laughs> and um, sometimes the picture is not good enough. And then you won't get a completion of the objective. Uh, but there we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So you get feedback as well when you do complete the objective. That's very so, handy. In this case, Doc didn't have anything to <clears throat> mention on that, but sometimes he will give you feedback on, on the picture. So now one of the objectives are completed, and Emily also wants us to do two more in this in this mission, mm -hmm. uh, two more pictures. But I think we we can go uh, and explore other things. Those uh, rock formations are pretty cool, though. Yeah. I think is for me, it's one of the things <clears throat> that sets the Late and Late District apart from Hirschfelden. Um, is really this kind of more rugged terrain, um, kind of the more the Pacific Northwest rock formations uh, that you would encounter in that area yeah is that something that would have um, been made or occurred um, due to ice age previously or it or probably is yeah. um, this is this is nothing uh, th these are these are rock formations that we we uh, researched and you could definitely stumble upon something mm. close to this that uh, super cool I've never seen anything like it for real, but I assume I'm in the wrong part of the world for that. <laughs> so, and this is also then uh, what we call a landmark, uh, which we also will, uh, I won't spoil that, but you will stumble upon uh, landmarks, about uh, close to 20 of, la uh, 20 of them in each reserve. Uh, and they will have uh, uh, this little uh, uh, interaction point. Um, so then you can interact with it and you will get the landmark unlocked in the codex. Uh, so in this case you will find it here and you can read a little, read up on a little bit of, about it and you also get a picture of it. <clears throat> yeah. The nighttime is part of, you know, Call of the Wild has really excited me. I've sometimes just like like to fly through the nighttime uh, landscape here uh, just because of the moon and I've tried to you know in our, with our little dev tools fly towards the moon doesn't work unfortunately <laughs> I wasn't able to reach it but it's just the uh, it's just the the graphics and and the landscape is just super beautiful and I can also now when we have the map open tell you a little bit about um, how the uh, the different regions that you you open up as you as you move on uh, so each reserve ha does have five main regions which you can see here with the orange text and if you uh, zoom in you will then see the sub regions for each main region so in this case uh, lake district here has uh, high lake and bowman as sub regions and uh, these are also as you move on to through the world uh, added <coughs> to the codex so you can you get some information of each subregion mm. here yeah and what's great is that Studios. sometimes uh like for norden right i think there was uh, the roosevelt elk is included in the description and it tells you roosevelt elk can regularly be seen stalking the mountainside so you, you know if players are having a hard time locating a certain animal they may look to the codex mm. to find some useful information there too that's great yeah it's a great place to look like i know especially I know that people will start giving each other tips on where to hunt different species. That's yeah. going to happen. But for a start, I think this is great. Yeah. And sometimes you don't want to go on Google and try to think, you know, right. find things. You want to emerge in the game. So. Yeah, I think it's important to give the players the tools they need within yeah. the game to just have fun and succeed. For um, sure. So, yeah. And um, what else? Yeah, the when it comes to the regions, um let's go back to the map uh you the characters also have their region you might say so um the first character you will uh, get to know uh in in the Leighton lake district reserve is uh, of course besides doc 
is uh, Richard Hope, um, who uh, is um, a survivor. Um, yeah, survivalist. Survivalist uh, and lives in, and hangs around in, in the Lake District region. And um, he he actually then obviously hunts for to uh, for for a living yeah. to be able to cope in the wild because he's actually living in the wild uh, as a survivalist. Oh, that's cool. So he uh, we, he will ask you to to hunt blacktail amongst other yeah. um, in in the lake in the Lake District region. Okay. Uh, we could actually why not. What if we fast travel to this yeah. uh, outpost just to see something else? Richard's one of those characters who I thought had a very kind of impactful uh, backstory. Um, he's actually a, a veteran, um, and while he was abroad, um, his family, uh, I believe he had a wife and a child, yeah. uh, were in an accident. Um, and so he couldn't cope with that very well. Um, it was unfortunately fatal. And so he basically kind of escapes to Leighton Lake as a way to get away from everything. Um, and he makes it a particular point to take himself off of the grid, essentially. Um, and you can see that kind of backstory highlighted in the Codex yeah. as well. Yeah, so this is Richard Hope. Oh, look at that. So he's got his own motivations as to why he's in the reserve and sort of what happened after he came to the reserve. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see that some of the, the characters and residents in the reserve will interact with each other as well. Um, you'll hear about it. Mm -hmm. And it will affect the missions that the player exactly. will play as well. Yeah, I mean, each each character has their little, little arc, um, narrative arc, that you will follow then as you uh, help out, help them out. That's super cool. I love when, especially when um, interaction between characters kind of changes what happens yeah. for you as a player. <clears throat> I'd just like to do a brief reminder here that uh, if you have any questions for Andreas and Greg, feel free to ask them in the chat and Stefan will pick them up and we will do our best to answer them. We've been chatting our, our heads out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, chat, chat is pretty busy, so that's why I was not saying a lot, because I'm busy reading and responding at that's the moment. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. I've enjoyed Andreas' guided tour, though. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah, you, should, you should look into that, maybe, you know, become a tourist guide. Yeah. Oh, yeah? North, maybe. North Sweden. <gasps> go on some guided tours. Well, maybe I, I can get a discount voucher or something. <laughs> it's like 20% off or something. Yeah. Well, we have actually a resident in, um, is it late? No, it's not Leighton Lake. That is a... Oh, yeah. You know, works in the tourists. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, yes. Uh, he uh, helps with hikers and things like that. Yep. Yeah, he helps show them around. Found another cairn here. I'll just add that to the codex as well and uh, see what it says. By Richard Hope. Ooh. Yeah, so we got a little note left in this can by Richard Hope, and uh, it's his um, survival list, what he thinks is important for survival. Yeah. Uh, a cutting tool, cover, flint and steel, rope, a container for water, uh, and awareness and curiosity. That's well spoken by <laughs> Richard Hope. A little poignancy. He has a good point. He has a good point. One could say he's a man of few words. <laughs> <laughs> that list is succinct and simple. Yeah. Not everybody talks as much as we do. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you you yeah. might think that I'm just running around here, but it's it's mostly to just uh, show off uh, interesting stuff. But we I might be able to take on an animal if you'd like, but I'm not the best hunter. I should be honest. <laughs> And tell you that. I but, wonder who the best wow. hunter is on the team. Exactly. That would be a good. Question. Oh, we got a oh, bear. A bear. Oh, it's time okay. to sneak around. It's hard. It's hard to say. Like the best hunter on the. If if we take the whole, the hunter team, like both <coughs> teams, classic and uh, Call of the Wild. Ah, uh, that's. Will probably be. Uh, probably be David. Yeah. Yeah, we wanted we wanted yeah. to exclude him. We wanted to exclude him from from our competition because he's just too good. 
he has so to form, he, he has to form his own team. He has to be alone in the team next time. He's just he's just unreal. He knows all the tricks in the game. Yeah. I know that the black bear is one of the more difficult animals to hunt. So its uh, senses are highly tuned. Mm. And uh, players will definitely, uh, you know, find... Oh, there it is. Can we see it? Yeah. Really? Zo zoom in. Yeah, there it is. See it? Okay, it's walking yeah. behind the tree. Oh, there it is. You have a great eye. I would never have seen that on my own. Oh, Look there it is. Yeah. And we have the uh, the wind at our front. Yeah. So it, it's good, know, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Be sure to aim for its vital organs. Heart and lung shots mean quick. <laughs> there we get it. What? Oh, Can it see running? it. Gentle now. Oh. Take a deep oh, wow. We got it. I think we got yeah. it. Oh, man. You got the vital what a organs. Shot. That was totally not expected. <laughs> when you're under pressure, you shine. I've heard this theory that if you make people's expectations low and then perform well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Oh, poor thing. Flesh left lung. Look at this. 100% integrity bonus. That's perfect. And yeah, mm -hmm. so you use the right type of ammo mm -hmm. for this animal, um, which is what that rewards you based on. And the quick kill means that you hit a vital organ uh, and that it didn't suffer. <clears throat> That's, you know, yeah. Okay. Oh no, a great shot. That's awesome, man. Good job. Add it to Johannes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my stats are looking good now. <laughs> So yeah, now we can see the hunting pressure there as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So this here <clears throat> is the hunting pressure. So if I want to continue There's my no hunt, I should move away. No shortage of ways to spend it either. Should we move towards the next objective, or should we? Um, it's pretty far. Do we have um, a fast travel? We have fast travel, but not really close to where she wants us to go so i was thinking maybe we could find a few other collectibles or probably maybe just we go examine these question marks see what they are have uh we could visit a hunting build a yeah. hunting structure maybe yeah that'd be cool mm -hmm. So players will encounter two kinds of hunting structures currently. Um, that's the hunting stand and the ground blind. Um, and each one of them uh, basically is camouflaged and masks your scent, right? Yep. Oh, that's nice. With the scent as well. That's very convenient. Yeah. And so it's a great way, it's a great place to use allure mm -hmm. um, and, and draw animals to you because they won't detect you, but they'll be attracted to the, the sound of the lure. Um, so it's a great tool for that as well. And I believe some of our missions um, highlight these hunting structures as well and require you to even use them. Exactly, yeah. So because I wanted to highlight that fact that um, that that is also uh, a, a, a way to hunt and um, which which maybe the um, the new player wouldn't wouldn't uh, get, but um, we want to encourage to try that out. Uh, that it also that it boosts your concealment, obviously. Um, so there we have one. So you would have to go there and build it up before you can. Use exactly, it. you need some money uh, because it costs money. Yeah. Um, Which we burned a little bit. Hope we have enough, though. Yeah. <laughs> So as Doc said, you can earn cash um, through your hunting activities as well as completing missions and things like that. <clears throat> Essentially partaking in the reserve. A lot of different ways to do it, basically. Hey, you're oh. on quickly. So there we got it. Pretty. And you actually do get some XP for building that oh. as well. So it's, uh, some 
piece of handiwork right there. I mean, you, you know, nice. that not anyone can build that. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> it takes a little bit of skill. Look at you, shooting bears, building construction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Building a tower Handy all by yourself and all that. <laughs> In like one second as well. So yeah, I have my toolbox always with me. Yeah. <laughs> I left the convenient axe everywhere I go. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. This is a great lookout spot. Yeah. Yeah, you do get some height, so that's... Mm. Oh. No. No. And I mean, we're near a lake, um, so clearly this may be, have some neat zones for drinking for some animals. <clears throat> so it's definitely a, a great vantage point to look out for something. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I mean, I think I've that's happened to me that I that I might have gone to a tower and then I might have like uh, worked for a while, and then I noticed suddenly that an animal ha has come really close because uh, the animal hasn't noticed me. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a valid way to hunt, definitely. <clears throat> I know. Also, in in the hunter classic, it's a a known hunting strategy, basically. Yeah. And also in real life. Um, yeah. So it's definitely worth giving it a shot, I think. Mm. I realize we haven't that we, we never got to the part what Andreas does on the game. Oh yeah, you should talk about it. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, so uh, I uh, I'm a level designer slash scripter. Um, um, but on this project, I've also been uh, maybe more than uh, uh, earlier uh, involved with the, with the, the mission and also writing the characters and the narrative, uh, which have, has been fun. Um, but as a level designer, I mean, um, together with Peppe that you uh, met in the last stream, we it's all, it's been all about <clears throat> finding out the correct distances to stuff in the world to make sure that the world is interesting to explore and that it has uh, interesting stuff to explore um, positioning all these lookout points outposts and points of interest and everything um, and then um, yeah also working together with Bjorn the game designer and uh, to, to define where the animals uh, can be found, etc. Um, and then also doing, of course, research uh, to make sure that maybe the, the landmarks in the, that you stumble upon feels like something you would stumble upon in this part of the world. Um, uh, what else? Also, I mean, in terms of the characters, uh, you, you would want to write a character that feels uh, also not um, strange that mm. he she would be here and what uh, find good reasons for uh, him or her to be uh, out here in the wild. Yeah. It sounds like it's a lot of bits and pieces in all aspects. It's a jack of all trades. Yes. A designer definitely uh, wears many hats. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, that has been the case very much. White tail. Oh. Oh. Oh, there it Running is. Running away. Yeah. Is it? No, it's, it's a female, I think, right? Yeah. It's minding its own business. <laughs> Wants to get away from you. It might be worth mentioning just that if you see something that's not looking as it should or similar it's because we're playing on a pre-release build so because the game isn't out until thursday no exciting almost there super excited yeah if you haven't already definitely check out our steam group and get all of the other information we've released about the game so far yeah there was a lot of tracks there so clearly a lot of animals were visiting yeah. the zone mm. this is another drinking zone and obviously this is a really good <clears throat> For you to find because it it will get added to um, where are we right there yeah there it will get added to the map and the information it gives you is uh, that in this case it's a white tail uh, drinking zone 
and you also get the hours where they where they usually show up there so in terms of i mean the hunting structure we just built um would probably be a, a nice place to be at knowing that there is a drinking zone here mm -hmm. so there are yeah jumping a little bit <laughs> Jumping does create a lot of noise, so it can startle some animals. That's true. I realized though, after doing a few streams with developers, um, because we're more than one person, obviously, in front of the computer, whenever we spot an animal, people tend to like go quiet and like, Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Start whispering almost. Yeah, I love, um, you know, we, we, I work a little bit with the audio teams as well, and one of my favorite things that they do is that when you do go into a scope, mm -hmm. you kind of get a more focused um, ambience. Mm -hmm. So you sort of tune out. I think maybe the other Greg might have talked about this a little bit, where um, you kind of focus in on what you're looking at. And I think it happens in the possibly in the binoculars, but definitely in the scoped weapons as well. So it kind of ups the tension. That's super. That's like it's such a nice touch to it. Yeah. Oh, it's a cranky one. Seem to be surrounded by bears. That's not great. <laughs> They're, uh, maybe you're leaving behind a need zone for them. Exactly. <laughs> Seems like it. I feel like they're grouping up on us here. And besides the characters um, giving you missions, you also have. Uh, uh, in Leighton Lake District, Doc, um, and in um, Hirsch Hirschfelden you have uh, Connie, and they also have a few missions for you, uh, besides the other characters you'll meet. Yeah, as, as game wardens, they're really tasked with taking care of the land, um, and there's so much that goes into that, just given the sheer size of the place. Mm. Um, so, you know, when we were thinking of the wardens as well, and when they're communicating with you, um, they're always on the move. They're always doing something. Um, they're not just, you know, standing still. So it might sound like sometimes they may even hurry to say something to you, mm -hmm. um, but that's not because, um, you know, they don't want to give you their attention. It's just that they're so busy trying to take care of everything and, you know, um, putting out metaphorical fires in terms of, um, you, know, t you know, taking care of some of the residents' tasks and needs. Um, because they are always the ones who will relay you uh, what the residents um, kind of uh, are involved in and what they may need help with. I think that's a cool aspect that there is some kind of, um, I'm not sure how to put it, but they're like the link to you, for you, uh, to the inhabitants of the reserve basically. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, we're trying to say that this is a small community in a sense. Um, and there are actually neighboring towns uh, to the reserve. Um, so, you know, but the reserves themselves offer an opportunity for the players to kind of escape um, civilization in a way or crowded, you know, human contact and sort of just become one with nature and allow themselves to explore nature. Oh, it's pretty close, isn't it? It sounded pretty close. It sounded close, but it seems to know I'm here. So I have... Oh, wait, wait, I thought I saw something in the trees. Yeah. There it is. You see it? Wait, or um, my eyes may be tricking me. Oh, yeah, zoom in over there. Anything? It might have been the wind. Wind is just playing tricks on me. Maybe now it's going to snow at this um, and something that I really like too is that the rain um, and any kind of ambient noise helps um, mask your kind of um, presence and the noise that you're creating. Well, it's it's straight up ahead. So this rain is actually pretty handy for us to try to, and you can hear mm -hmm. when you go into scope, you sort of the rain tune that a little bit as you yeah. become more focused. So I really like that. Really makes it seem like you're focusing. And I think yeah. it allows you to be more focused as well without like hearing the rain too loudly. Exactly. Um, you know, the Hunter games reward accuracy and everything about it. Oh, we have a deer over yeah. there too. Oh. oh, look at that. Oh, it's pretty that's close. A oh, oh, that's noticed you. Don't spook the bear. I think I'm gonna this let that bear. one go and see if I can find the bear. 
Fair number two in that case. Yeah. There it goes. Sprinting off. Let's hope it didn't mm. sprint. Oh, oh, that's there close. Is. Yeah. There it is. Can you see it? Yeah, a little bit. Got some of these tracks over here, and one of them might belong to the bear. Mm. Oh. What? One bear? No, no, no there's <laughs> another one. They're messing with us. Yeah. Because we decided to track the white tailed deer, we have to. Oh, there it is. We have to re examine uh, some of these footprints for the bear to essentially trigger that cyan colored mark. Yeah. Yep, so now we know. If it's the same bear, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But from this, yeah. That's good or at least where it's heading. Yeah. Okay, here somewhere. It's almost as close as you can see it, but kind of the same thing, huh? Mm -hmm. okay. kind of yeah. You can always touch the tension in the air. And this Richard Hope guy, again, by the way, he you can stumble upon his um, camps. He has a few um, out in the wild that he's built. Uh, it's just. Yeah, because he's got everything down to a regiment essentially. So he knows, you know, to that he can, you know, set a base in one area of the reserve and and um, you know, sort of hunt in that area and then move over to a, the other. And um, he follows the migration patterns of uh, the animals he's interested in in the reserve, which is the black tail. Yeah, he sticks to the black tail. Yeah. Um, the black tail deer. I think I lost. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, those tracks disappeared on us. May have gotten lost in the mud. Sneaky bear. And we're approaching what looks to be like a mini little peninsula in this lake. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if we can cross there, actually. Maybe not. I think That's some... a bit deep. Yeah, I think some like shallow water you can cross, but when it gets too deep... That just tells maybe something about how how big uh, this reserve is that uh, I've been working with it for such a long time and uh, I I don't I don't even know exactly where you can cross or not cross for example <laughs> yeah. it's um, it's so big. That's why um, you've done a really good job with creating a game if those who worked on it are still not like doesn't know every little and green of mm. it. I think there's so many like screenshots that players can take. They're just like this, these oh, these like yeah. rays of sunlight. Wallpaper material. Exactly. Right so here. so much desktop wallpaper material. It's like it's so pretty. Make a collage. Yeah. I definitely want to see that when the game comes out, like yeah. share your screenshots with us on Twitter and Facebook. Absolutely. And would love to see it. This red fauna reminds me so much um, of Actually, I've been to Alaska, mm -hmm. and um, I've been backcountry camping, and just I remember happening upon this like open area with moss and fauna of so many different colors. Oh. It was in the summertime, like late August, and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and this Layton Lake reminds me so much of different parts of it, so it's really nostalgic to me sometimes yeah. to walk through. That sounds really nice. Yeah. Coyote down here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mating call. That's good. It's not a warning call at mm -hmm. least. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Two of them. Well, no, that's a coyote. Yeah, so we got the coyote and then we've got a deer behind it. Choices, choices. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> What to pick? What to pick? 
well, players can essentially decide, you know, what kind of trophy are they looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, man. At least if you're this lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of hard to hunt in this in this high grass. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it is. So we're kind of moving a little bit, not quite with the wind, but, mm. but that's probably why the coyote is starting to notice us. I find it really handy that when you're able to spot an animal, you get that little outline on it, mm. um, which helps kind of you to keep track of where it's going. I agree, it's very handy too. Yeah. And it doesn't stay like stay with animals for too long either, yeah. so it breaks the immersion completely. I believe there's also an option to turn it off. Oh, yeah. Um, but don't quote me on that one. If you want to go hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For certainly the more experienced mm. hunters, they can, they can do that. Mm. So there was a uh, question just here about missions, and it's about the benefits uh, that missions give you in gameplay. So Darkflare75 is asking, what benefits are there uh, to doing missions? Is it just score XP gain, or does it unlock anything? So is there anything we can say about that? Of course. Um, uh, money. Money is uh, a reward, and um, w which will obviously, yeah. And give you the opportunity to buy uh, new fancy equipment and weapons. Mm. And experience, right? Also and good. experience. Yeah, so you'll be able to use that to progress your character in different skills, um, as well as perks. No, oh, per perks are, yeah. Uh, per weapon specific perks um, and character skills. But as you know, the more missions you do, the more missions you unlock. So um, it all feeds into each other. So the more time you put into it, the more you're rewarded for it. Yeah. And uh, the, there are uh, what we call main missions, which are the, um, tied to the, each character's narrative arc. And then we also have side missions. And uh, so there are slight differences in what the reward is, depending on the size of the mission. Um, some missions can um, make you travel basically the whole reserve. Um, and they will obviously give you more um, money uh, or reward as a, as a whole um, compared to the side missions with, which might be so a side mission can be as simple as ID a call from a coyote and that's it yeah. um, and another great thing I think with, the, with them is that you, you have these missions um, activated uh, and uh, so maybe without uh, actually focusing uh, on a mission like specifically like track setting it to tracked which you can do in the um, uh, mission log and with that I mean when you track a mission you will have the information of the mission uh, put into the uh, hunter mate yeah and that's a side mission right yeah there. Uh, we actually haven't showed you this, um, but here we have then uh, a message from uh, Doc in this case, um, and he um, he uh, has well he sent you a text message basically, and by accepting it, it gets added to the to the mission log here, and you will find it, and you can choose to track it, uh, and when you track it, it will highlight the um, uh, if, if if the mission is connected to a region. So it, the mission, if the mission tells you to go to a region, the region will be highlighted on the map. So it's easy for you to know where to go. Um, I think the uh, Doc 12 mission actually tells you to go to a region. Yeah. So yeah, travel to mm. Bernanke High. So now I track that mission, and uh, the region will is. be highlighted. Oh, that's, so that's yeah, it's it, so it's easier for you to to get around in the world um, and know where to go. Uh, but missions that are not tracked will still uh, lie and and be they are still active. Yeah. So suddenly you might find yourself shooting an animal and bling, you get money, you get XP, and um, because you happen to finish a mission. Yeah. 
Uh, and that's uh, something I, I really like uh, in the design. That's very nice. So you don't have to pick like only one at a time. Yeah, because you can have a few active uh, line. So there is, has also been another question by Huntaye2000. And um, the question was about the inspiration for, for missions and where you draw your inspiration from when you design missions and uh, lay them out. Yeah, well, um, as I said, the um, I try to connect uh, each character, each mission to the character. So, like, why why would this character ask you to do this? And uh, and I obviously I'm also uh, inspired by Hunter Classic, should be said, um, and the way. Um, and and in terms of like the technical details, um, as I'm not uh, a hunter myself, or to be honest, uh, not um, I don't didn't know much about hunting when I started on this project. But I obviously got to learn as as I went on and did my research. And um, yeah, well, that was my. Um, the the information I gathered uh, was used to create the missions, yeah. like how you hunt certain animals or, yeah. So you could say that on all it's very thought out why the missions are in a certain way. Like it's not randomized just to keep you busy. It's very yeah. It needs it needs to make sense yeah. after all because exactly. I think if I think if you. If you play the game, that's also kind of what you expect, and I think that's what the game exactly what the game delivers. Absolutely, I think it's good design to have different elements all worked in to a mission. You know, whether it's art, sound, narrative. Um, in our case, mostly narrative um, plays a big role. But uh, I think every mission features one aspect or the other in different parts of it. So. Oh, look at that! A little coyote. Traveling coyote. Oh, we can hear, see. Do I have an okay caliber for this? I'm not sure. <laughs> and I'm too far away, I think, as well. I think <clears throat> if we check, um, is that in, in the codex as well, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So we can always look up. Sure. Sort of the most appropriate this one ammo type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So under there, you'll see the recommended equipment for the weapon class, mm -hmm. and you can then um, cross-reference that in the store to see, you know, what weapon class a certain ammo type is to make sure that you're using uh, the most ethical caliber, which will nice. affect your integrity bonus. And I mean, that's a big, big part of hunting in general. So that's awesome. Yeah. Can you see it here in the inventory as well? Mm -hmm. If we uh, hover over the ammo. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. talking about that and also about ammo, do you guys have a favorite weapon in the game yet, or is that yet to be decided? That was a question from Myro SL from the stream chat. Have you got a favorite weapon, Greg? I haven't used the uh, the revolvers as like the quick agile kind of self defense weapon, which can be very handy. Um, when you're essentially being charged by an aggressive animal, like the black bear or something like that. Um, in Hirschfelden, it's the wild boar um, and the European bison. Um, so in those cases, for example, uh, I think a revolver is really handy. Um, I've tried one of the uh, sort of single-loaded, more shotgun ones. I kind of like that one. But you got to be pretty close up to kind of take advantage of the spread that it fires. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and it's great for um, essentially varmin control. Um, mm -hmm. And in, and in our world, uh, the coyote um, is sort of really um, in abundance um, and is considered varmint by the local community um, because they've had some um, bad interactions with them. Um, so something like uh, the uh, a shotgun would be uh, a very effective varmint control tool. Yeah, so maybe we should just fast travel and get a shotgun maybe well, what do you say no sure yeah how much time have we got left we have another five minutes okay so that's not show. that much uh... whatever you want to show off for the last one 
And if you guys have any last questions, <coughs> be sure to ask them now. Bookshop rounds now. So I'll comment up there. Don't spend Johanna's money. Oh yeah. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Too late. But Andreas did do great work hunting that black bear. Yeah, I think you he he earned a little bit. Deserved it. Yeah. It's the oh, oh, oh so look at, I don't mean, shoot the squirrel. Yes, yeah, so but. But. This, but the ammo type is perfect for it um, yeah. because with a small target um, it may be hard to um, you know hit it with like a scoped that's weapon true. for example especially someone that's something that's moving fast but the spread allows you to really Poor squirrel. yeah I'm afraid I won't have the time to get this coyote I wanted but um... we can fire some off to the <laughs> yeah. sunset yeah. still nice nice try <laughs> just it's, it's the spirit that counts celebratory like uh, <laughs> yeah. firing here's uh, your participation medal you could shoot it off into the sky and get <laughs> one of the birds it's here actually it's close oh yeah, but it was running oh now it's trying can see if we can get it worth the shots we have to follow the blue track, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nope. It's not. Mm. I think our bug shot. I forget what weapon class it was, but. It's a light too. Oh no! Running away. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's? Oh, there it is, trotting away. Yeah. Yeah, to the left, I think it was. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, we got it, we got it, we got two it. Of them. Oh, it's a hard one. It's too far away. Oh. Okay. So we can always, you know, switch weapons to, to a scoped rifle if we needed. But, um, yeah, I mean, to make effective use of a shotgun, you do have to come up closer. This would be like the perfect ending. Wait, no pressure. Right. I think it was. Oh, yeah. Dang it! Where did you go? I think. Oh, oh that's there it is. Okay. Yeah. It's too if you far. want to spot it, you might be able it's to help far. keep track of it. I'm not able to spot it. You are too. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. There. Okay. It might be turning around. Very hard now. Is this a different one? So Should tiny. I? Well, well, yeah. Take your time, and then you can hold your breath. Oh, there's two of them. Go for the very hard one, which is the one on the right. That's the hard one. There. Yeah. I can't see. Yeah. You want to spot it again? It's really hard to see it. <clears throat> it really shows the convenience of actually using your binos as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. that. No, no. Keep my fingers crossed. Mm. Nah. <laughs> go, for the, go for the other one. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll just chill. Okay. Oh, well, let's go for that. Ouch. Oh no, stand still. I want its profile. I need to. Your heart rate true. is really high. Oh, I think it's turning around. Mm. There we go. You could also try to land a spine shot. Yeah. But that's a hard one. Right to the left. Yeah, right, right, right over there, in that bush. Yeah. It's not very good. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Ah, wait, hold on, okay. let your heart rate restore. Yeah. That should have been a clean shot. It's bleeding, so that's a hit. Follow the <laughs> oh, blood I think it's more than bleeding at this point. I hope fire. so. <laughs> he's he's exhaling now. <laughs> he held his breath for that one. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Wait, did it? Oh, that's it. We got it. Oh look at that! It's a nice one, Perfect man. Perfect ending. Harvest it. Let's take a look at this hard one. What yeah. a hunter! Whoa! Jeremy, look at that cash. That's awesome. Quick kill, 100%. So we didn't use the appropriate ammo type in this case, nope. uh, which is why we didn't get any integrity bonus, but um, <clears throat> its weight uh, was was high, and that's why it's a hard one, and as well, yeah. 
Cool. Nice one, man. Yeah. Great job. Thanks. Yeah. Quick kill bonus. Very good. Yeah. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, this hour, you know, we only we, we only ever uh, stream for an hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the hour goes by so fast. Yeah, it really it's does. unreal. Thanks for having us. Thank you Thanks. so much for joining me today. And I think you guys were amazing. Yeah, I hope, absolutely. It was fun. I hope that you got fun. to talk about the parts you wanted of the game and that you guys got the questions uh, responded to about missions. And I hope that everybody will enjoy it. Likewise. It's yep. been great to have you. Please play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and on, uh, yeah. On, on Thursday, we are planning so we're not 100 percent sure if we if we can if we can make it so i'm just saying we're planning it but we're planning on doing a longer stream than we usually do with a surprise guest yes Ooh. it's gonna be very very exciting what's it awesome. gonna be on the big big day so we'll have two stream. days to go two yep. more days it's yep. gonna be freaking amazing. I hope you guys are super <laughs> excited. Um, my yeah. question is if there will be cake. That's my question. Like That's my main question. question. Will there so be will Semla? There, will there? Oh, Semla. Yeah, <laughs> Semla. Will there, will there be Semla? semla? Stefan would love to know. He loves oh, Semla. <laughs> That's the big mystery. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye. bye Happy bye. hunting. Take care.